Life is a relationship business and the world is our work. Success in today's unpredictable world depends on our ability to cultivate, nurture, and activate relationships. Our next guest has over three decades as an international hospitality ambassador, connecting people from different backgrounds and building beneficial networks on three continents. Please welcome Margie McCartney. And Margie, how did you even get started in the hospitality industry? Uh, well, many years ago, uh, my best friend from kindergarten, Heather McLeod, had a flyer at her mom's house about a coming up uh, St. Patrick's Day limousine race scavenger hunt that I was organizing. And she said, you know, my sister was just here and she's a meeting planner for an insurance company in New Jersey. And uh, she really thinks you should get involved in the destination management world. And I was like, tell me more about it. And then she ended up going to that company in New York and they hired me. And that was the beginning of it and been loving it ever since. Wow. Tell us about the book that you wrote and then networking lessons from an extraordinary life still in progress. Right. Well, actually, that kind of got me through COVID. I had been with the same firm for 15 years and then got furloughed during COVID and, and wrote the book. Um and it's called And Then Networking Lessons from an Extraordinary Life Still in Progress, which my publisher came up with. And uh, it talks about, you know, life lessons, not taking yourself too seriously, being open to new experiences and uh, bursting your own bubble. <laughs> I like that bursting your own bubble. Why is it so important for networking these days in business? I think it's the most important thing. Who you know around the world can help you with every new situation. Um, just keeping yourself open uh, to new opportunities and experiences and helping other people and always trying to keep in mind, what can I do for that person? Because that's always going to come back to you tenfold. Is that what it is, networking? Because so many times I think it's, it's a one-sided relationship. So you have to turn the tables around and think, okay, how can I help this person as well? Not just Absolutely. use them. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I certainly believe that for sure. Every time you meet somebody new, instead of thinking about what what can they do for me, think about what can you do for them. Are there any other tips that you can give for people who are maybe just starting out in business and, and trying to learn networking and how to do it? Well, the whole thing with the burst your own bubble is about not taking yourself too seriously. Because <laughs> if you go out of your comfort zone, comfort zone you can meet new people and expand your horizons and it's it's an amazing opportunity. So I just think just constantly thinking about what you can do next, how you can help other people, um, what's important to you and uh, sharing those experiences with others and, and going after what you want is important. So just keeping those things in mind at all times. Do you think it's easier for youth today to network or is it easier for those of us who are older and have been around a little bit longer? It's a little bit different, um, I guess, for everybody. It's it's a different world for for sure now. Um, you know, when I was younger and starting out in the industry, we didn't have computers. <laughs> um, you know, but uh, it's it's a great big world out there with so much to offer, and uh, just looking at each opportunity and what what can you do next is is the key. I would say. Tell us a little bit about the global scavenger hunt. What is that, and what does it do? The Global Scavenger Hunt was an event that I got invited to um, by the founder. His name is Bill Chalmers and his wife, Pamela. The two of them put it together. And uh, he sent me an email probably 13 years ago and saying, you know, this is how much it costs. This is what it is. And I was so blown away. I was like, this sounds really, really exciting. So um, I decided I was going to do it. I had to save the money and figure out how I was going to get three weeks of vacation and whatnot. Um, and we were supposed to go in 2020. Um, I went with a dear friend of mine, Kathleen Wood. She's an old boss of mine too. And uh, it got canceled in 2020, like everything else in the world mm -hmm. during COVID. And uh, it was rescheduled for this year. So we went to 15 countries in 23 days, averaging about 25,000 steps a day. And I had torn ligaments in my foot. So I was limping the whole time. It was not easy, but we had a lot of grit and a lot of determination. And uh, it was an incredible experience. We had no idea where we were going next. Um, we started in San Francisco, went to Seoul, South Korea, uh, Uzbekistan, had never been to any of the stands before, uh, Jerusalem, I think Sofia, Bulgaria, the seven Balkan states, uh, to uh, Zagreb, Croatia, and then Istanbul, and we ended up in Montreal. So it was quite an experience. What was the purpose of the global scavenger hunt? 
it, it's really the opportunity of a lifetime. It's to meet people from different backgrounds. So this was something that was right up my alley. And I knew the moment I got the email many years ago that this was something I wanted to do before I died. That's for sure. And uh, so just meeting new people. One of my favorite places was Tbilisi, Georgia. And uh, we had a take your cab driver to lunch day. And that was fabulous. And we met a fabulous waiter who helped us with some of the things that we had to find. And he spoke English. So it was always great when you had somebody who spoke English. Um, And just, you know, seeing different cultures, we had to wear scarves and, you know, be respectful of different religions and people's backgrounds and, and all those things. So it was an incredible opportunity, incredible experience. We both just smile every time we think about it. I got to see Kathleen last week and we just rehashed some of the amazing stories and um, opportunities that we had on this global scavenger hunt. It was just amazing. And that we won a bronze medal just made it all the better. Aw. Now you've got a new position that you're going to be taking come January. Tell us about yes. it. Yes. Um, actually, I um, the woman that's going to be my boss, her name is Penny Wing. She lives in San Diego and we both knew of each other, but we had never met before. Um, and she is great and has started several bus- has several businesses. Um, and it reimagined was something that she started with her uh, business partner um, during COVID or right before COVID, I think. And it's representing hotels globally because um, a lot of people in the hotel industry lost their jobs and sales positions. So she put together a best of the best in both the USA and Europe. And they reach out to like 60,000 different meeting planners and incentive houses and wedding planners around the world and make sure that they're on top of the best four and five star hotels that are either new or newly newly refurbished around the world. Um, and part of the project that I'm going to be on is the new hotel guide, which is very exciting. And it's an opportunity. Uh, it was put together by planners for planners. And it's an opportunity for people to just go online and look look up the top hotels in the world at any given moment. And we make all those connections. So it's going to be really exciting with a lot of travel opportunities. So and more networking, which is something I love. <laughs> You've got a lot of enthusiasm. You've got to have something uh, special, you know, one favorite thing that you like about the industry that you're in. What is that? Um, well, there's many things I like about it. I, I've always loved the hospitality industry. I can't imagine being in any other industry. I love the people. I love the clients. And um, we get the opportunity to make people happy. And in a world that's so crazy, <laughs> more now than ever, Um it's a gift to be able to make somebody happy. And uh, so that's at the end of the day, that's something that uh, can make you smile and, and make you feel worthy and, and happy. Do you have a big goal for 2024? Um, my goal is to remain happy. And uh, my we just uh, actually, I didn't mention to you, but I'm originally from uh, Westchester County in New York. And uh, we were just home celebrating my mom's 95th birthday. Um, she is a coal miner's daughter and very proud of that who met, fell in love with, and married the greatest guy in the world, my dad, Chuck McCartney. He was a a decorated World War II veteran from the Battle of the Bulge. And uh, they had a fabulous marriage. I lost my dad about 18 years ago. He died on their 54th wedding anniversary. But, uh, you know, they really put us on a a wonderful path in life with all their love and support. And uh, I've been very blessed to be able to do some amazing things from meeting the Pope one-on-one at the Vatican to going to school in Austria, my junior year of college, attending the Sydney Olympics in Australia. And of course, as I mentioned to you, going on the global scavenger hunt this year with Kathleen was was quite a highlight. So, And I got to be a tour guide in Russia as well. So uh, life has been full and fun and exciting. And I'm looking forward to this next chapter for next year, um, traveling, meeting some new people and um, you know, trying to make more people happy. If folks want more information about your book, where can they find it? Uh, it's on Amazon. It's called And Then Networking Lessons from an Extraordinary Life Still in Progress. Or they can go to my website, which is McCartneyPartners.com, and I will sign it and mail it to you. Perfect. Thanks for sharing your story with us. We really appreciate it today. Thank you. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 